Hi guys, it's Kate here for my 50 book reviews in under X minutes. I'm hoping for eight. We'll see what happens. Let's just jump right into the books. The first one I want to tell you about is Anne of Green Gables, and this is the compelling story of an imaginative orphan who is adopted and raised on the picturesque Prince Edward Island. Montgomery's descriptions of the vivid and lush landscape that captivate Anne are unparalleled. The Betsy Tacey series, charming coming-of-age story about the all-American Betsy Ray raised in Minnesota, saved by the bell for the the 1920s. The Harry Potter series, whimsical and creative story of a young boy named Harry who discovers he's a wizard at the age of 11. Definitely one of my comfort reads. All Creatures Great and Small series by James Harriet. The twee, very charming series that talks about James Harriet, a country veterinarian in the north of England, and all of the hijinks that ensue when you work with all sorts of animals from horses to cats. And this definitely feels like Harriet's love letter to Northern England. The Lord of the Rings series by J.R.R. Tolkien. Literary fiction meets fantasy in this series of Frodo Baggins' epic quest to destroy the One Ring. Tolkien definitely didn't invent the genre of fantasy, but he brought more awareness to it and made it a lot more popular. The Chronicles of Narnia by C.S. Lewis. This is the tale of the magical land of Narnia and the children that visit there. This doesn't get a lot of popularity on booktube, but I think it's so wonderful. The art of story telling in this is phenomenal. Gone Away Lake by Elizabeth N. Wright. Wonderful summer adventure story for kids about two cousins who discover abandoned Victorian mansions near a swamp. This is one that definitely captivated me when I was young. Jim the Boy by Tony Early. This is a coming-of-age story of Jim who's raised in rural North Carolina in the 1950s by his widowed mother and her four brothers. The relationships between Jim and his uncles in this is really sweet to see. A Room with a View by Ian e. Forster. A dynamic modern classic about the escapade of Lucy Honeychurch who lives in Edwardian England but goes on a trip to Italy and then all of the hijinks that ensue when she comes back. The combination of charm plus beautiful writing plus humor make this one of my absolute favorite books. The Shepherd's Life, a memoir of a man who was raised in the Lake District and is a shepherd in the modern day era. The beautiful writing in this made me really bummed that I only had a library copy so I couldn't underline everything. My Father's Castle and My Mother's Glory by Marcel Pagnol. This is a man's memoir of the summers he spent as a boy in the hills of Provence and the hilarious anecdotes about nature and just his family plus the beautiful writing make this one of my favorites. I Capture the Castle by Dodie Smith. Modern classic narrated by the very charismatic Cassandra, whose family is living in a decaying castle in the north of England. The beautiful writing and romantic settings and happenings and humor in this make it very winsome. Cranford by Elizabeth Gaskell. A hilarious book about all of the small town happenings in a little town in rural England. And who can't love a book that includes a sunburned cow and a priceless piece of lace that is eaten by a cat? Wives and Daughters by Elizabeth Gaskell, a sort of Cinderella type retail about Molly Gibson who when she becomes a teenager gains a stepmother and stepsister and this to me is a nice compromise between the Brontes who are very dramatic and Jane Austen who can be sometimes restrained. It's a nice happy medium. Pride and Prejudice by Jane Austen. Austen's iconic tale of Mr. Darcy and Elizabeth Bennet, who upon first meeting each other make wrong assumptions. This is a novel also that has many well fleshed out and beautifully, wonderfully flawed characters and for that I love it. Emma by Jane Austen. Austen's most lighthearted and fun work about the effervescent but oh so snobby Emma Woodhouse. And this also includes my favorite Austen man, Mr. Knightley. Persuasion by Jane Austen. Austen's most quiet novel about Anne Elliot, a woman who when she is young is persuaded out of marrying the man that she loves and what happens when he comes back into her life years later. Sense and Sensibility by Jane Austen. Austen's story of the two Dashwood sisters who suddenly become penniless upon the death of their father. What I love most about this novel though is seeing the opposites that the sisters are and how they balance each other out and grow and change by the end. Great Expectations by Charles Dickens. The story of Pip, an orphan who is raised by his sister and her husband, and the themes in this include crime and guilt and revenge and reward, and it's a beautiful picture how you get to see Pip grow up and change and turn into an adult in this. Les Miserables by Victor Hugo, a dramatic and larger-than-life story set during the Paris Uprising of 1832. This is a book that will capture not only your emotions but also your intellect and will give you a book hangover for a couple months after. Anna Karenina by Leo Tolstoy. Tolstoy's heartbreaking tale of doomed love with well-fleshed out and full-bodied characters unlike any I've seen in any other novels and it definitely made me understand why Russian novels have the reputation that they do have. 
A Guilty Thing Surprise by Ruth Rendell. Rendell's hard-heading tale of Elizabeth Nightingale who is murdered out on her nightly walk around My Fleet Manor. Shake Hands Forever by Ruth Rendell. A mystery that starts out very chillingly when Inspector Wetsford can tell that the husband of the murdered woman is not truly grieving. Kissing the Gunner's Daughter by Ruth Rendell. A haunting tale of a family slaughter while they're eating their dinner and the one surviving member crawling to the phone and calling the police to come save her. The big mystery is there's no signs of entry or leaving, so who killed them? Death and Holy Orders by P.D. James. The most sophisticated mystery I've ever read about a murder of an archbishop at an all-boys boarding school. A Great Deliverance by Elizabeth George. Elizabeth George has such a way of writing really gripping and emotionally captivating characters that when I read her mysteries, I feel as emotionally as engaged as when I read in Austin. A Rule Against Murder by Louise Penny. Louise Penny has such a unique atmosphere that it's hard to describe about her novels, but I will say that she does a great job combining the cozy setting with the hard-boiled themes. My Family and Other Animals by Gerald Durrell a dynamic and zany modern classic about the unconventional Durrell family who up and leave England and move to the island of Corfu. And another bonus to this are the lush descriptions of nature. The Narrow Corner by W. Somerset Maugham, an atmospheric and unique classic that has stayed with me so well five years in, and it's an adventurous tale at sea about a man who takes passage with two mysterious characters who are not all that they seem. Jane Eyre by Charlotte Bronte. Bronte's iconic gothic tale of the orphan Jane Eyre and all of the adventures that happen with her. Little Women by Louisa May Alcott. The heartwarming and inspirational story of what can happen when women work together to build each other up and challenge each other to grow. Atonement by Ian McEwan, a novel to be savored, reread, and dwelt upon. The story of Bryony, a precocious young girl who aspires to be a writer and the consequences that a lie can have. Nightingale Wood by Stella Gibbons. A sort of Cinderella-esque type retelling, and it has all of the humor and zaniness that I love in modern classics. Ella Enchanted by Gail Carson Levine. Levine's imaginative and compelling retelling of Cinderella shows that often the expectations people have for you are something that you can exceed. The Enchanted April by Elizabeth von Arnhem. The story of four women disillusioned with their lives in England who decide to rent a villa together in Italy and their lives are forever changed. Miss Pettigrew Lives for a Day by Winifred Watson. Another zany, larger-than-life modern classic that takes place over the course of one day with Miss Pettigrew and Miss LaFawcett. This is a story where the ending gets tied with a neat little bow, and it's an incredibly satisfying classic. Gone with the Wind by Margaret Mitchell. This antebellum modern classic can be polarizing not only for its setting, but also for its heroine, Scarlett O'Hara, who is extremely feckless, ruthless, and utterly self-absorbed, and doesn't realize her blindnesses until almost the very end of the book. My Cousin Rachel by Daphne du Maurier. Du Maurier's gothic mystery about a mysterious visitor named Rachel who comes to visit her cousin, and you don't know what to make of her until the very end. The Mixed Up Files of Mrs. Basilie Frankweiler, a delightful children's book about a brother and sister who run away to the Metropolitan Museum of Art and the mystery that they uncover while they are there. Mandy by Julie Edwards. Edward's timeless story of an orphan named Mandy who climbs over a wall near her orphanage and finds an abandoned ramshackle cottage in the woods and fixes it up. Mere Christianity by C.S. Lewis. Lewis's accessible doctrine of Christian belief. This came at a time when I really needed it. A Praying Life by Paul Tripp. Tripp's practical and well-written guide to improving your prayer life. To Kill a Mockingbird by Harper Lee, set in a sleepy little southern town in a summer that shakes the whole town up. What I love about this novel, though, is that it shows the blindnesses and weaknesses that all of us can have. The Little House series by Laura Ingalls Wilder, an elegant and simply written story about the Ingalls family and all of the moves that they make in the pioneer era in America, filled with warmth and kindness and emotional depth. These stories captivated me as a little girl and still do today. My Side of the Mountain by Jean Craighead George. The tale of Sam Gribley who runs away from home and makes his way in the Catskill Mountains, hollowing out an oak tree to live in in the winter. A surprisingly captivating book for how little actually happens in the book. A Suitable Boy by Vikram Seth. Vikram Seth's sweeping tale of India and the 1950s during a time of flux, and Rupa Mira, who is trying to find a suitable boy for her daughter Lada. The themes in this include humor, sadness, prejudice, reconciliation, but most of all, love. As I Lay Dying by William Faulkner. Faulkner's iconic, gritty, and hard-hitting stream-of-consciousness-style novel about the Bundren family who are taking their mother, Addie, back to be buried with her family's roots. 
This book was so different from any other book I had ever read, and I didn't know books could be this amazing. Coming Home by Rosamund Pilcher. Pilcher's writing is something that I savor and cherish, and some of the most emotionally engaging writing you can find out there. This is the tale of Judith Dunbar from her girlhood until her adulthood, going through World War II and up until right after, and it's such a compelling read. The Goose Girl by Shannon Hale. Shannon Hale's creative retelling of the fairy tale of the same name. This is the story of Ani, a girl who when she is little discovers she can speak with different animals, and whose life is turned upside down when she finds that she is betrothed to a prince from a neighboring kingdom and the journey that she takes there. 50 books all done! watching if you made it through all of this and I will see you guys for another video soon. Bye-bye.